So welcome. We're gonna do a Newsday stream for Eve Online. I am Matt Rolf, I'm talking in stations. If you're new to this, we go on for about 45 minutes to an hour talking about what's going on in Eve Online news. You're welcome to hang out uh, with us in local chat. Uh, that is Twitch. So you can give us your comments there, or you can uh, jump on and listen in uh, directly live on Talking Stations Discord. All that you can find through talkinginstations.com. Let me bring in a friend here. I'll see if I can nab him. Oh, Dirk's here. There we go. There it is. How's it going, man? <laughs> it's going. It's the it's the eve of darkness, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Darkness is coming. Darkness is coming. Maverick, you're Black on too. Down. Yo, how we doing? Good, man. Um, so Maverick is, everybody knows Dirk McGurk, but Maverick is somebody mm. from Vindy who former, yeah. um, oh, I was about to say fraternity, but you're not. You're the current fraternity, but you are former Phoenix Coalition. Who was the center of Phoenix Coalition? Uh, <laughs> tip of yeah. my brain. So I'm the Fcon. Yes. So I'm Vindy's alliance, which is part of the Alliance of Leadership, and I'm the head diplomat for Vindictive, which is part of the Winter Code Coalition. Um, so yes. Awesome. Well. All right. Um, we also have Victor Fell there. Uh, we'll leave him on. How's it going, Victor? Going well. Right. Well, as can be expected. But, um, yeah, so what I wanted to do, uh, talk about is the blackout that's coming, Dirk. Uh, this is going to fall right <laughs> in your time zone, isn't it? Like Friday? Right in my time zone. Uh, because of well, your I show, mean, yeah. Oh, well, well it, I, guess it, I, I guess it goes live on the day, on the morning of, uh, the morning of Open Comms tomorrow night, yeah. So, so that's kind of cool. I mean, you know, at least we'll have a few hours under our belt to see... Uh, to see whether or not mayhem has ensued or or what has gone on um but yeah it's, it, it starts at downtime on friday morning which is 11 o'clock a.m utc for anybody out there who uh, doesn't know when downtime happens because you're happily asleep in your freaking bed when it does <laughs> that's me exactly like downtime for europeans is like eight in the morning or something Right. I, I, I yeah, I think it depends. Or is it eleven? Or? Well, I mean, it's it's eleven o'clock in the morning. Well, it's eleven o'clock in the morning 11. for those in yeah, yeah, like the UK. It's about eleven. Yeah, it's about eleven odd. I'll cover that. So just before noon. That's interesting. So I always it's so funny. I always think of it's three in the morning for everyone. No. <laughs> All right. All right, so a quick review of the blackout. Uh, local is changing to a delayed local. Speaking of delayed local, let me put out this delayed ping. Boop. There you go. So blackout is uh, what it says there, null sec in delayed mode. And at first people thought, well, this is only gonna be for July. Now people are thinking, well, we don't know because CCP put out a message that said, indefinite amount of time. So is this a permanent change or is this a temporary change? We don't know. And what is that change? Well, that change is you do not appear in local proximity chat unless you type something. So it's kind of an opt in, which means that if you're a hunter and just looking around or a lurker, uh, people will not be able to see that you're in their system unless they probe you down with probes or a directional scanner. And that allows a great amount of um, stalking, basically. Uh, and that's good for people who like that gameplay. It's bad for people who are the prey, who don't want to be stalked because they're doing something menial and they don't want to be paranoid all the time. Bad for the carrier rats, right? <laughs> yeah, like who are the winners and losers of this? I think that remains to be seen. Yeah. I think there are some people out there that think they're going to be the winners because you know it's like obviously under the under you know under the cloak of of nobody knows whether you're there or not, right? Um, you can probably hunt easier. Whether or not you find the targets to hunt, 
um, is a different story. Whether or not you find targets that have now banded together and, oh shit, I can't hunt that. And now you're going to, and now maybe you yell in local to announce your presence, <laughs> you dirty blobbers. <laughs> <laughs> is a completely different story. I think it's going to be a mix, right? It's going to be a mix across uh, across space out there um, of, of, of how this uh, you know affects people. I think that the losers are probably going to be test who can't keep their uh, little fingers from typing all the time because, you know, <laughs> you can't, they constantly blast. They're known for constantly blasting uh, local chat. Just So it's going to be hard for them to break that habit. You rang, sir? Yeah, Ron. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> test. Talking of test. Yeah. <laughs> how, how are you guys going to uh, avoid uh, what they call shitting up local um, with the with the new opt-in? Yeah, you know, that's a time-honored tradition. And I think uh, it might just have to go, you know, um, the ways of the old, <laughs> old bird. style or something. Yeah. Well, that, I'm sure they'll do it when they have enough members. And it'd just it'd be funny to see the FCs constantly saying, like, stop typing in luck. <laughs> Too late. Um, but there are some, like, let's, real world mechanics here. Uh, we were talking about this uh, in the crew channel. And it was it was an interesting discussion about well, now in order to get intel, you'll have to put somebody at each gate and see who comes through. But if you miss them, if you miss somebody coming through, there's no way to know that somebody got past you. So it's going to be very incomplete intel. You know what I mean? Like if, if you're watching a gate, let's say you have a special account that you just have up on a gate and you turn on the sound, but for some reason you walk away or something and somebody at that moment comes through the gate, you don't hear it because you're not sitting there, and you come back, you sit down, everything looks like it looked before, except now there's somebody in your system who hasn't typed anything, so there's no way for you to know that somebody's in there. Again, unless- And that's one of the, yeah. one of the things we've like talked about because you know, we always try to stress in the Intel channel that it be, you know, that it's complete, right? Like it's, um, you know, such and such system, and then a name uh, of one of the people, right? So you can see the corp and the alliance, and then plus whatever, right? And if there's, you can't see them, it's an NV for no visual. And if you do see them, you'd be like, you know, um, whatever, like UTAC M, Matterall, uh, you know, Hecate plus eight, right? But what we're talking about now is kind of putting a message out, you know, today or something that, hey, Incomplete Intel is okay because you might just have it on the right side, like one of the screens, and you might just see a white flash, right? <laughs> because uh, if it's an Insta Warp or something, you know, or Cloaky Tengu, you know, you'll see like the white of, the, of them being neutral for like a second and a half, two seconds, and then it's gone. Yeah. Oh, there, I'm turning up some volumes. Volumes. Something we wrestle with here. Uh, OBS just is so crap at picking up volume the difference between zero and a hundred percent on this is not very big so okay yeah so well i think i think it will be interesting the one thing is if you have a network of people who are doing it you only need to catch a person once so they would say like well, you know this frigate last seen in this system coming your way then you have an idea of like what to expect. And so it becomes like a living relay. So you may miss one or two, but you might be able to, if you have four, four, three or four guys working a certain area, be able to catch, catch glimpses of people as they travel through your system and have some idea. Now the, the idea is that it's going to remain dark like this for a little while. Let people get used to it. Let people, uh, I don't know, benefit from it. And then at some point, you'll be able to get infrastructure that'll do a lot of this for you. It'll be well, able to I mean, stuff. I would put that in the speculation ballpark. I mean, look, everything right now is basically speculative, right? Um, um, you know, there's been talk out there of these observatories and things like that. Honestly, though, if you were going to, I, I just don't feel like those are right around the corner. Maybe they are, but um, well, I didn't say they were around I, the corner. I think it's but... purely, I think it's purely speculative that 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 is somehow 
what's coming at the end of this rainbow. Or that it'll function that way, right? There's no guarantee it'll function right. that way. I, I, look, I think that, that overall this is just generally uh, e- either their first foray into, hey, welcome to your new local, um, you know, or it is just as part of kind of everything that's going on with invasion right now. It's part of kind of this sort of, you know, chaos, you know, let's let's put this stuff out there. We'll see how this does and whatever. Test it. Go for it. But, yeah, it's indefinite, right? That, I mean, that's what we know. That, you know there, there, are some, there are some people who latched onto the word July in, in one of the previous statements, and, and they're like, oh, at the end of July. It's like, okay, you can't read that into it either. I mean, it's beginning now in July. Whoa. I think an airplane just took off. Who was it? It's beginning now in July, um, and who knows? Maybe, you know, it's just, maybe it just keeps going until they're ready to not have it keep going, or it's the new norm. Well, that's the one definite. It's indefinite. By the way, um, we have actually switched uh, our public chat to slow mode, delayed mode, <laughs> proper delayed mode. Uh, and that's indefinite, too. So we're going to see how that works out for a while. And that's indefinite, too. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> we'll go black out there, too. Yeah, totally. We- We'll get some uh, cloaky moderation, so out of nowhere, you'll just get zapped, lose your ability to type in chat. Um, no, it's a, it's an interesting experiment, but it's not. It's, we're not experimenting like lab code experimenting. We're seeing if this solves some problems that we're, we've been having. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, well, the blackout thing, you're right. We speculate that we'll get infrastructure to be able to, to relieve some of that fog of war. Uh, but I, I'm I'm really happy we're moving into uh, new terrain as far as the space landscape goes, because you had null sec and low sec and high sec not be all that different from one another, especially low sec and uh, null sec. So this really creates more terrain. You also have wormholes who have had this kind of a delayed local for a while, so it it um. I think there's still enough differentiation between all this weird stuff that happens in wormholes and what's happening in null sec. So I think they're still very different, right? Because in wormholes, you still have weather effects. Uh, you, you have collapsing entry points. And uh, you have a host of very dangerous NPCs. And now null sec gets some of those dangerous NPCs in, in the form of drifters that will marauder around and take out structures. Uh, so you need to defend them. Well. Maybe we've never really seen them take out structures that. No. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. Is like all, for all the panic and all the consternation about this is this is terrible. This is really affecting us. It's bringing us to a complete halt. And there were no no real structures destroyed. No, it, I guess that 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 may be one of the disappointing factors of it, right? With as many structures as over a given period of days early in the process, right? That the drifters hit on, you know, around on an around the clock kind of basis, setting up, you know, setting up uh, ones that were reinforced and then other ones that, you know, were kept from being reinforced and things like that. That ultimately nothing of value, you know, <laughs> I think <laughs> nothing of value happened here. Yeah. Like, but, but the uncertainty caused by for one of the first times that i can recall uh ccp just dropping something into the game that caused people to have to react out there um i I don't want to call it consternation i mean it's uncertainty and 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 how should organizations deal with that with that kind of uncertainty probably exactly the way they did which is drop what you're doing we can always do that again at another time uh, focus on the home front and deal with you know the emer- deal with the emerging unknown threat. Mm-hmm. Well, the drifters have uh, I think to continue to attack, and we haven't really heard complaints about it. Although they're attacking in pretty strong numbers, if I'm not mistaken. Ron, do so you they stopped a few days ago. Um, mm-hmm. The so. When last we talked, there was like, th- for me, there was like three distinct phases. 
Um, and then there was a fourth phase and, you know, that was kind of like an inside joke because I was like, you know, I wish they would just stop teasing us and just drop the hammer. And they just basically doubled. Um, so it would be a particular system and then it would be 10, uh, be five battleships and five cruisers. You would kill them and then you may or may not realize, but there's another group around. And that went on for hours in particular systems. So, you know, up to five groups, four groups, five groups uh, in a system, hitting structures, you know, hitting uh, miners, hitting uh, ratters and things like that. And they would appear in, uh, some would appear directly on structures and then some would appear um, directly in belts, just random belts. So they've actually stopped for the last two days, you were saying? Yep. Yep. The last few days. Yep. I wonder if, if uh, they're going to roll out this blackout without any other factors like Drifters 2 so that so that people don't get overwhelmed, maybe. It, it would probably be smart you know, if you are trying to test sort of what the player reaction is, right? Because, again, we're talking about NullSec here. Right, which is which is generally you know player driven and therefore you know the the stuff that happens out there you know player versus player right if you want to legitimately test how blackout is going to function in that environment you probably don't want sort of these other things going on you know the, that might also just change the player behavior like if you if you mixed high drifter activity with blackout I don't think you get a good feeling of what blackout really means for the players in Nullsec. But you need that threat out there, right? Like it's dark space. It's cold, dark space. Nobody's the threat is uh, the threat is other players. And, you know, because well, the again, other players though aren't th This is going to bring them out of the, you know out of their you know out of their mole holes, right? You know to sit there and say, okay, you know. Now we can go out there and we can do this thing without without perfect intel being you know being a disadvantage to us. Um, again, null sec, player versus player. What you know, I guess it's just what kind of data CCP is looking for. I would think they don't want a bunch of other factors uh, uh, clouding you know clouding what it is they're looking at. I've heard that before. Like they they want to test this to see what players are doing, and you don't want to dirty it up. It's it's something that's catching on as a as a common wisdom. Um, but and, and you're right. Maybe they. But, but what's that period? Is like okay, the drifters are turned off for the foreseeable future until we get a feel for what players think about this blackout thing, because I think the the drifters are an important component of a blackout because. Players aren't reliable to be everywhere all the time. It's kind of a maybe, maybe not, and mostly not. Right. Well, not not to mention, and I think it was I think it was Arendis who who wrote an article on INN yesterday about some of the contradictions. Right. The reason for the blackout is due to high drifter activity and whatever goo or whatever you know helium, existential helium or something like that that's used. Uh, you know, to sort of power the communications system by Concord, right? That um, that that's the reason why blackout is happening. So it would be sort of contradictory if what they did was they turned off the reason, yeah, <laughs> while turning you know while turning off you know local. Right. Well, yeah, and that's just uh, what a lot of people say is lore and window dressing like the play some of the players will refuse to say take that as like any, anything important but i think even as a game more of a gameplay rather than uh this fits the virtual world this fits the lore uh rather than that just a gameplay reason would be that you need the threat of darkness like the darkness has monsters in it you know at night you have nocturnal predators that's why it's scary to be out you can't see them but they might be able to see you uh, Somebody so, out there raises a good question. You know, will the map continue to update players per system? Um, you know, you know. So when you look at the map, right, you know, in-game map, um, you know, and it's sort of got that. It indicates how many players per system, you know, in there, right? Uh, you, you wouldn't think that it. Mm. You think that they would consider that in terms of if supposedly the you know systems that would be accounting for that are blacked out. 
you know, shut down, whatever. Um, yeah, I, something tells me that they will give that level of intel. They just won't give this other level of intel. So it'll be, you know, so, you know, so it'll be kind of good for, uh, you know, I want to say hunters, right? That they'll be able to, you know, they'll be able to see, oh, you know, where, where are these levels of activity in terms of not only, you know, you know, ratting kills and, th- you know, player kills and, and things like that, but, you know, also something on the map that, you know, shows where the hot spots of, of, of players are and, and therefore go hunt in the darkness there. Yeah. Yeah, I think the uh, that level of information that you get from Dotlan and from the in-game map, uh, you know, it's just excessive. I wish, you know, there was a little bit more of a fog of war kind of effect and a little bit more mystery around it because, you know, without local, you know, I, I, the lore, right, is that the NPCs are, you know, paid by Concord and then Concord reports those numbers so that's where you you know kind of get those numbers from but you know i think about how important that tool is going to be when you you know are, you're like this kind of new hunter's patch right this new hunter wave everyone's a hunter like i think it's going to be like hunter versus hunter to be honest <laughs> because everyone's going to be hiding in caves and you know minor drone twos and <laughs> peasant fit rorkles i think it's going to be you know uh, much more not not as crazy, right? Like as people aren't going to be super blingy and you know, kind of doing the same thing that they were doing just today. Let me let me, uh, hey. let me uh, switch this up a little bit. You have what looks like here under recent activity, the uh, Tyrannus uh, appear to be attacking in systems that are triglavian infested, which these are points. So that those are the abyssals. Right, um, and when they're inside the abyssals, and they die, they get that triglavian text. Um, but down below, oh, you'll okay. see the uh, wormhole there, the J I J one five five. Here, this one here. Oops. There. So that's also it could be wormhole drifters, though. Yep, that could be wormhole. Right. But the one that you did just click, yeah. So the in the Peregrine Falls. Right. So that could be a drifter wormhole, right? Or like the Jove Observatory where they kind of randomly spawn. Yeah. And we've been looking for clues about where they're related, right? Like how they relate to wh- where they spawn, can they be predicted and that kind of thing. Yeah, I think the the interesting thing about, you know, the four waves are it started really strong and then it got weak. And then uh, at the very last one, you know, when they doubled the spawns was actually uh, an interesting point because that is when when I saw the double spawns, that is the point where carriers are in danger. Right. And then you can only do supers. Right. So it's only like the most powerful ships that you have because we were saving supers at 30 percent armor like it was that you know they wreak some havoc now and again we don't know what tomorrow is going to be. <laughs> this is kind of it is kind of the interesting thing about all of this, right? Is that is that what we do know is that blackout is coming as of downtime tomorrow morning. What we don't know is what else comes with it, in terms of all of the other things that have been, I'll say, intermittently going. Maybe the drifters come raging back tomorrow at the same time. Yeah. Now I just did another mute myself moment, so I just recap that. That was, uh, just to be clear, it wasn't anything unusual. I thought it was drifters and invasions mixing, which we were kind of looking to expect um, because they are probably going to fight each other since they're mortal enemies, these NPCs. But this is these uh, Triglavian symbols represent a system that, or an area that is taken over by Triglavians. That's what I thought that was, an invasion. But it's, not, it's abyssal space where drifters also lurk. So there's nothing unusual about that. Also wormhole drifters here. So nothing unusual about that as well. 
Okay, there was something that came out uh, yesterday. I don't know if you guys saw it. Let's see if we can find it. And I don't remember what Twitter it was. But um, somebody said, somebody from CCP, there are people complaining saying, just destroy the whole EMI or um, EFI, whatever it is that gives people, gives players data uh, to work with yeah. so they can build their third party. ESI. Yeah, ESI. ESI, momentary lapse there. ESI. So <clears throat> players will build websites, tools, calculators, and they pull in information from EVE Online through um, through the ESI and end up uh, having um, having information to be able to work with and to to you know to to be able to be able to be useful. And somebody was saying, like, yeah, you just need to destroy all that. For some reason, they think they're going to do an alteration of it. And because maybe it gives too much intel, as uh, Spider07 says there. And, and one of the devs said, okay, we'll destroy it. And I think he was joking, but there seems to be something going on with ESI these days. That would be an interesting development because... I don't know of a large null block that doesn't rely on that kind of data scraping daily. I mean, from the recruitment process to tracking your alts to, hey, did this guy do this at this time? <laughs> They'd lose a lot of the, I, I can say safely that like Imperium would lose a lot of the meta right there. Yeah. Well, uh, again, ESI is probably not going anywhere, but I wonder if there's some modifications on the table or something like that. And I'll look up that tweet right now. Does anyone know anything about that? Does that ring a bell? In well, so that's going along what we were just talking about, actually, which is, you know, the ESI is just amazing on what it does and what you can uh, send to the client. You know, we use a navigation app uh, that you put in the things and it automatically sends you know the autopilot with the jump bridges to your client and it scrapes all this data the NPCs and all these things that kind of push dot land and allow these hunters to be able to build these apps that can follow you along in the map and then notify you of kills around you and uh, all these different things right and NPCs and mining and, and so that level that sort of you know the fog of war right and people are sort of arguing that with blackout why don't we just go full bore you know and just say for 24 48 hours no esi as well right like just completely the wild west and see what happens dirk you were gonna say something about falcon Oh, it, it, he just, Falcon's out there trolling. He's like, in, uh, he tweeted out, in space, no one can hear you. Re and then he just puts a big black screen picture. Nice. Um, I was going to say, you know, Ron, you, you make a good, good point about this intel. You've made it before, and I'm going to agree with you because uh, I don't know if it got got to your desk but i was down with a hunting gang in your space the other day and that's how we actually found one of your miners and killed them was through looking at those uh what is it? it's the the npc delta is a big hunting tool that a lot of people use we just look for that delta we go there and check out what's in the system yeah the delta reveals what NPC kills. NPC kills. Right. So, but but what's the nature of a delta that makes it special? Just, just the change. It's like delta the, being delta being changed. You know. So you know if you, you basically, Victor, you're saying you're looking for places that have you know a high rate of NPC kills recently, right? Yeah. If for example, if we see a, a system and we're like, oh, well, there's a slope down on it suddenly you know it's dropped off like crazy in the last do 48 hours when we can kind of assume okay people switch their hunting now where they switch their hunting to you look for the place with the ginormous delta like right now ps uh tac 94k and delve has a huge delta and, and if, if i were a hunter in delve that's where i would be headed for right now 
and this helps um, you know differentiate between time zones because you'll have the one hour uh, NPC kills and you'll have the 24 hour PC kills NPC kills and you know by using the Delta it calculates hey what's the change from the last hour and what's the change uh, you know, from the 24 hours, right? So by the Delta, you can see it's going up and down and maybe in these two systems, they only mine or rat there for, you know, four hours. So this is the four hours that they're ratting in. Well, it took me a while to find it because it was actually through a personal text, not our Intel channels. And here it is. So it's CCP bartender. Uh, somebody says, shut down Crest. And it says, wish granted. And well, that, okay. But number one, Crest is shut down. <laughs> They've moved over to ESI, it's so easy. <laughs> okay. Totally taken in by that. Hilarious. Oh, right, because the name changed and so did the technology. That is hilarious. Yeah. All right. Yeah, wish, <laughs> wish, wish granted. <laughs> wish granted 18 months ago or whatever. <laughs> All right. This whole line of questioning, oof, out the window, because I forgot Crest is no longer what ESI is. I mean, I don't th look. I don't think the the issue of discussing it, you know, uh, as was happening there, um, uh, is necessarily out the window. I think there's a lot of people that think that you know, you know, what, the amount of information that you don't have to go manually collect in this game and compile on your own um, is is immense, mm -hmm. and was even more when they came out with with you know the replacement for for crest and api with you know with, with the easy stuff so esi swagger esi swagger yeah it's going ash how's it going so this is funny this is the falcon uh falcon ping where it says no one can hear you re with the blackout <laughs> it's a big black box it's pretty funny how are you doing ash what's going on not much, just making myself some breakfast. How you guys doing? I meant in Eve. Not in your table. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't mean personally. Yeah. He doesn't give a shit. I can't care about you personally. I'm oh, just kidding. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I haven't been able to do that much in-game. Yeah, I know. It's been 24 hours for the last two weeks, so it feels like something must have happened, but uh, we're just waiting. The blackout's going to happen on Friday. Do we know what time is it? Oh, here it is, 48 hours. So at downtime on Friday, which usually means downtime before Friday. So Friday will be the first day that local chat will go dark. Matter all production question. Why don't we have a countdown clock on this? That would be great. <laughs> don't they have one on Reddit? Somebody sure has one. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, if we put a, ta a countdown clock, yeah, it's not a bad idea. We'd put it on the website, but we don't really draw people to the website right now. Or actually after it. Put, yeah, maybe more. Something. That yeah. sounds more like it. We'll do it's live been 24 coverage. hours since we left low local. Yeah, and do like uh, you, we're, we're, 18 yeah. hours, 37, almost 38 minutes. Under under 38 minutes. Basically, what I think is... Reactions. What I think... The funniest thing about all of this is the people that are preparing to like make a chat bot for their AFK cloaker. So that way it'll talk in local occasionally just to make sure that you know that there's yeah, somebody in local. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that wow. was pretty funny. It's like, this is an odd way of fixing the cloaky camper. Cause now you're constantly cloaky camped. So what's the point? Well, this, of is, this has been the suggested way of fixing clo cloaky camping for a long time. One of the suggested ways, there's all kinds of other things. Oh, but yeah. I, I but I do like what, the reverse nature of this. What I kind of find funny, it it kind of ties into the market. But some of these recon the recon ships that can't be descanned, people buying them up for uh, extremely inflated prices, thinking that will be the new end all be all, as if nobody's ever heard of scanning scam probing someone down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you own a curse and it's just kicking around in your in your ship hangar, now might be the time to sell it. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, sir. I've I've flown curses, pilgrims, stuff like that for years. If you think you're going to be a great solo PvP or in a curse, you got another thing coming. Well, it's just a draining ship, isn't it? A cap draining ship. Yeah, mostly it's drones and newts. And sure, I guess if you got a fleet of them together, you could do something. 
Well, if you catch somebody in it that's ratting and you nude them out, yeah. the rats will kill them. Once, once, uh, once anybody who's paying any attention finds that out and the intel gets relayed, because this isn't going to stop the intel, it's just going to change the intel mechanics. Hopefully the curses of pilgrims is dead. I just don't they know why they're paying so much for that because it's like off weapons on, and they're done. The, I don't know why they're paying that much for it because like you don't really need that. There's only like 18 people in Nullsec that know how to descan effectively, anyways. So. <laughs> Let's see, curse. They're not wormholers. <laughs> they don't oh, have, have to know how to descan. Here's that massive spike. Let's see if I can make that bigger. So here's. The I mean, you can. Here's the you can essentially use the same tactic on them that you use on Delve Rats. Here's a you year just long keep view. it range from. Sorry, here's a year-long view so you get an idea that they bounce. Uh, this is a... Is it a cruiser? Yeah, it's an advanced cruiser. It's a recon ship. You can tell that up here, by the way. Ships, cruisers, advanced cruisers, recon ships. Uh, and in the last... Since the blackout was announced, you can see the volume is traded much higher. And the price has skyrocketed, so demand went nuts. And I've heard it's tampered off in the last few days. So let's say this uh, current market conditions, uh, wow, 314 million. What you can do, by the way, instead of looking at this graph that tells you limited information, is, and this is what you should do, is go to the table and actually look at the actual highs, lows, and mids of the day's purchases, plus the volumes and the orders. And you want to pay attention to quantity, and you want to pay attention to uh, average. Uh, you can see here's the big, uh, I think this is in millions, because that can't be right. Right? I don't know if that's in millions or not. 246. So this thing used to sit at, for a long time, 220. So it's about 100 million more than it was. So you're paying like a third more than it was, or more than a third. So that's a big deal. Those are T2 ships, so if T2 materials get squeezed out, those will probably only go up in price. Uh, it's a good stocking ship, et cetera, et cetera. And that's why people are buying it up out of speculation that it will go up and then they could sell it for a profit or to use it themselves. Curse is a new Las Vegas real estate. Yeah, well, we know how that turns, how that story ends. I haven't seen a lot of people with curses and nothing to do with them. <laughs> I, I haven't seen an announcement yet, but have they come out with blackout skins yet? I mean, they got they got to monetize this event, right? Yeah. Well, there's already there a are skin. Arabian Twilight skins. I have it for the curse and the pilgrim that's pretty much blacked out. Uh, well, since we use radar mostly, I don't think there's any visual combat. Maybe. Oh, thank you, Wildstar. Or uh, yeah, wild star for the sub. Okay, so uh, last week we were talking a lot about. Oh, let's see. This is interesting from Friar 101. Have T3 changed in price? Let's have a look. So one of the ships is a Proteus. So this is what I do. I'll go to a Proteus. I'll find the ship, and this little button right here, the top right. I don't know if you could see it. It looks like a target. If you click on that, it'll take you to the group. You see, this is the group here. So this is a ship. It's a type of ship. It's a cruiser, advanced cruiser, a strategic cruiser, and it's Galente based. But if you hit this, it'll open up the uh, location of it on the market, which is super helpful. And that allows you to see its sister ships or brother ships here. So Loki 156, actually, let's look at the table. Uh, no, that's... That's about where it was before. Those were at about 164 average. It looks like bounced up and down there. I'll show you the graphs. It's a little more visual for you guys. But yeah, it's pretty stable. Ooh, that's a good question on the Plex prices, if they've stabilized at all. Yeah, we'll get the Plex in just a second. It has, uh, it looks like it's possibly turning around. Uh, the Proteus itself um, looks like it had a correction a few, I guess, months ago. This is, let's do a year long. And Tengu and Legion, and those are the four strategic cruisers. And whatever bump they had about six months ago is gone, and it's back down to the 
to the doldrums. So this is interesting. I think there might have been somebody trying to corner T3 market, and that's my, why you saw maybe price competition. I heard rumors of somebody trying to do that, uh, but I think they gave up. Okay. The other thing we wanted to look at is Plex. Of course, Plex. This is like... Yeah, it's still, uh, it's still softening, but not as rapidly as it was. Now, Dirk said, why are you calling it a bust? Let's actually make this more visual. And my response to that was that it was falling. You can see that long fall. It was falling as fast as it was rising when we called it a surge, so whatever. And... I think our our predictions are that this will hit a, a little bit higher than it is right now by the weekend. The weekend is when a lot of purchasing happens because weekend warriors come out and those guys uh, will spend money on the weekends. Right? They're not doing stuff during the week. So if you look at Plex or look at anything, you'll see there's little humps. You see these humps here? Those are weak humps, week long humps. So here's probably a Saturday, here's a Saturday, here's a Saturday. It, it happens with stuff that's traded. You see these little humps? Yeah. Oh, you can't see them because it's too low. Let me get that. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, you see these these humps here are the week and the, the high points of the weekends. The low valleys are the weekdays. Oh, here's a good example right here. You check it out on your own screen. So by the weekend, when a lot of trading happens, uh, it's assumed that the demand will outpace uh, supply and you'll see a rise increase. It'll probably be slight, according to someone at uh, TIS, Amar, it probably should hit about a three point, sorry, a 4.0, um, or basically four million per item. Right now it sits uh, at a three, Point nine, which is awfully high considering just a few minutes ago. Wow, it's gone up, which is good. He predicted that as well. It was sitting at like a 3.7 million per item, which is kind of low. That, it, that means it wants to fall. But the people selling it were selling it at 3.9. So there's a huge divide between what people wanted to buy it for and what people wanted to sell it for. And it's a fight, a tug of war to see who's going to win that. Are you going to come up to my price and buy it off me at the price that I want to sell it? Or am I going to give up and go down to your price and sell it, um, sell it for less than I wanted to? And that was what was an interesting question. So the looks of it, it, it is already starting to rise, and that's why the prediction is by this weekend it'll recover a bit of its uh, price drop. So it'll be up in around four million per. That's not advice to buy. That's not advice to sell. It's just an analysis. Okay, that's the market. One thing that uh, we didn't look at was, um, again, Plex. You hit this little target, and it'll take you right to Plex in the uh, in the the thing. So I can actually use that to just go here to large injectors. So large injectors. Uh, these things were. These things were taking a bit of a dive too. After a very long time sitting at about a billion each. Now think about that. That's 500,000 skill points for a billion ISK. And that was a long climb. And now it looks like it finally is uh, softening up. Did I lose all my fans in here? Where are you guys? <laughs> I feel like we kind of. I don't. I don't think we want to go through all the things about Plex that we did yesterday, right? Which was pretty much about Plex and, and how things go up and things go down, and it's never <laughs> a straight line. All right. And then we can. Oh, 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 and then TLDR, we can speculate about all the reasons about how people are unsubbing, about how people are not unsubbing, about you know how it's the summer doldrums, about how a war just got over with, about how Plex had a big run up. There we go. Covered. I missed the last part. There you go. What? It's all of the things. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful yeah. summary. Well, I mean, it's yeah, a, yeah, I think that does it. 
I mean, people want to attribute it to the thing that they think it is, you know, and, and the Plex market is, is, is rather big and there is no single, you know, sort of, uh, you know, thing about it. It, mm-hmm. it went up for a long time. The fact that maybe there's some softness now, I don't think is indicative of drifters. I don't think it's indicative of blackout coming. I don't think it's indicative of just plainly the summer doldrums that typically occur when North Americans decide sunlight isn't a terrible thing. Um. <laughs> uh yeah. Uh yeah, their vam- their vampire skin stops burning in the sun. Okay, so the last thing is uh I think it was actually Wednesday or maybe even Tuesday afternoon we were in here talking about uh, how to fix nullsec. Astrothy, did you stumble upon something with Bard Ghost where you're like that's a brilliant idea? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> We're talking about how to fix uh, NullSec the other day. Mm. Uh, well, the big, the big one was um, making it so that the more secure, the higher, the higher your um, ADMs or whatever, the higher your uh, rank is, the more secure your system is, but the lower the rats are. So that way you could have, you know, like at stage two could have maybe um, uh, local, like you can put up your observation post at level three. You could put up uh, a keep star or a sino jammer at level four. You can do a keep star level five. You can do jump bridges or whatever. So that way you have these areas of established empire within NullSec, which are relatively secure. And, and built up and have all these facilities, but not a lot of pri- pirate presence because that just makes sense. And then in the more lawless areas away from those empires, uh, you have like the Nullsec of Nullsec, and that's where all of the pirate stuff is. So the, the lower, the, the, the less built up the place is, the less ratted it is, and all that kind of stuff, the more, um, the more powerful the pirate presence is, the more money you can make fighting them. Yeah, what? Wouldn't that just create big donuts in space where you kind of have your your vi- villa, or you have the garden inside the building, and you surround the garden, like that sort of environment? It could potentially, um, but of course, you know, uh, wily folk could definitely get into <laughs> your fishing pond. Um, it, it's basically an opportunity to balance the competing factors. Right now, uh, having a higher soft tier is just better in every way. And therefore, there's no reason to not do that as long as you can um, you know, do the work to be that way, right? Uh, the only, so in this idea, you would actually you would want to keep areas lawless such that you can farm them. Whereas there are other areas that you want to keep very secure because that's where your infrastructure is placed. Right. Well, anyway. So I don't actually think the idea of the fishing pool in the middle of the secured area is a bad thing necessarily. No, it's a limited space. So who uses it? And by the time enough people use it, it, it becomes civilized space. It's like this. It's like your slums downtown, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so that was interesting. We we're kicking around those uh, those ideas. And uh, DePopolo, he says, all I hear is nerf, nerf isk income and null even more. I, I don't think it's about nerfing isk income. I think it's about uh, it's more about you know the idea of you know how can you put in mechanics that don't just allow uh, massive organizations to sort of sit in a very narrow kind of pool and do all the things there. Uh, it, it forces a spreading out. It forces, you know, but but it doesn't necessarily so, hurt just a small organization the way that sort of hammer and nail approaches like nerf excavators for everybody does or nerf, um, you know, nerf anomalies equally across the entire board, right? Like you, you're taking a much more nuanced approach to it, you know, th- that would seem logical. Yeah, it's it's not about making income generation harder because obviously you can still control basically 
where your routing systems are. It's about making city planning a little bit more important, as it were. Um, and it also makes it so that anyone who's just going into Nullsec has actually some pretty good po opportunities. Right now, if you don't own Sov and you don't have one of the pirate beacons, most of Nullsec doesn't actually have that much like ready-made ISK opportunities for somebody to just go out there and kill some pirates because the Anoms don't spawn unless you've built up your military index. Mm -hmm. In this version, the, the, the good Anoms would spawn in everywhere that doesn't have a good military index. And therefore, uh, you know, you could go out into those quieter areas of Null and find really strong rats to go kill on behalf of the empires. And I think that that just makes more sense anyways. All right. Uh, I opened up uh, Cable's mic. If he wants to be able to talk, he can. Um, let me actually open up seriously as well. I think he's from the Imperium. I would just like to ask Ash in regards to your idea, do you refer to stronger rats as the individual rat being stronger, more powerful, or do you mean in like quantity of anomalies, for instance? Yeah, so basically just inverse the uh, the anom spawning rules. So instead yeah, so of so essentially high... re reverse the ADM system or uh, index system, whatever. Correct. So the higher your index, the lower the tier rat, uh, the lower the tier of anoms show up. All right. One other thing is, let's see here. Sixty-four bit client is the is the new norm. So it's now the default client. So I guess it had a, a really good beta period, and they're going to release it as the actual uh, standard client. And the thirty-two bit client, which was the standard, is now reduced to an optional client. Yeah, this is just phase two of the phase in process, right? Mm -hmm. So the idea the whole time has been that when the 64-bit uh, client is released, then the 32-bit client will be deprecated and removed, uh, or support will be removed, I should say. So um, basically, the first one was, OK, this is a beta, which basically means we think it's done, but it might not be. And so people would have to actually go into their um, menu and manually select 64-bit uh, client over 32-bit client. And the amazing thing about that was that 40% of the population did, which is incredible considering yeah. how uh, obtuse and out of the know a lot of the Eve population tends to be about these kinds of things. So that is an incredible voluntary adoption considering the fact that it was hitting, hidden inside of a menu. So because of that, and because of its relative success, uh, they've made it so now, if you just start up, you're going to be by default 64-bit. And in order to go back to 32, now you, those people will now have to go into the menu and manually switch it back to 32-bit. But if you have to do that, your, your days are numbered, because the days of no more 32 are coming very soon. You think they'll totally like get rid of it? They must have it as yeah. an option for people who have it didn't they say that at the beginning um yep. that eventually 64-bit would just be the the only option correct yep so you can't like it, they could theoretically support both in tandem but uh there are some pretty significant limitations i.e they couldn't add anything like if the 64-bit client allows them to do something fancy that 32 mm. just wouldn't yeah. they wouldn't be able to do that because of feature parity so they're just uh, they're ending support of the 32-bit client, which I, I mean. I think at that same time that that initial uh, thing came out about 64-bit or that 64-bit was coming soon or whatever the heck it was, didn't they also at that time change the minimum standards for for Eve? You know, minimum equ equipment hardware. That does sound familiar. I believe something along those lines. Either, either at that time or in the recent yeah, past, and before then, I do remember that they've recently upped it up. Either, either when they released the 64 or in preparation of. All right. Well, we have a few more news stories, but we'll hold those for later. Uh, Ron is here from tonight's show, Thursday show. 
The Tonight Show. Ron, and, uh, and we had actually someone from, we had Maverick on, who is actually from Fraternity. He's going to be on the show tonight as well. Ron, are you still here? Yep, I just popped back in. Oh, cool. Um, do you know what your theme is going to be this uh, tonight, this evening? Yeah, so I think we're going to do about 15 to 30 minutes on the ongoing Southern War. And, you know, I always feel bad when I'm the only one <laughs> talking to it. So we have Maverick, uh, who is an alliance exec out of fraternity. He's the alliance exec of Vindy. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have, I got Russ Rogg, who is the new military director for Winterco. And then I'll have Sidu, which is the FC for Legacy. And that was the big fight that they that we just had. Yeah. I was in it. It was like three hours um, in 28Y, 29Y. Was that what that um, video? So we'll have all of them. Mm -hmm. Is that what that video was? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was that video. Um, and it was, you know, it was like four and a half hours of fleets. But basically it was... Uh, getting around to finally uh, attacking structures like citadels so it was uh, attacking fortazars on the final timers i'm gonna show a clip of that video now but you can see the whole thing uh tonight actually the music <laughs> the music is totally my style right like mm -hmm. analog synth so and a lot of sin. Yeah. Uh, so I'll play it with the music. But you can check out that video later on tonight. We'll put it in links too, right? Why don't we do that? But yes, there is still a war going on, isn't there? Yeah. And we're fighting every day. I always laugh. We're like the war that continues and everyone's like, oh, yeah, if only something was happening. And Null's like, I'm like, yeah, we're fighting every day. Yeah. Things have been happening. Now, now you know how I feel. People always saying, oh, well, if only this happened. I'm like, what are you talking about? Uh, about what? Lore? That the lore, not enough love? Kind of about thing? lore stuff, about PvE stuff, whatever it is that I happen to be fighting. Faction war, you name it. Yeah. You'll be fighting in high sec as well soon. So this was a big win for Legacy, I guess. Yeah, it was a big win. Um, this one in particular is uh, the third Fortazar that we killed that day. And, um, but, you know, Winterco, like they're, you know, they were trying out a new Megathron Doctrine. And, you know, it was a big fight. It was a really big fight. Mm -hmm. And this is deep in Scalding Pass, right? And kind of just sweeping around Dederid and Scalding Pass area. Yeah. Well, if you want to catch all the details about what's going on in the Legacy versus Winter War, check out tonight's show. Uh, w when is that uh, UTC time or, or local time? It's going to be 6 p.m. Pacific time. But what's that for you guys? 0100 Eve time. Right. 1 a.m. in England. <laughs> uh, but hey, for people who stay up late, check it out. Thanks, Ron. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's going to be a great show. You'll hear it on podcasts, and you'll also be able to pick it up on YouTube uh, after after the show airs. So, oh, 2 a.m. in England. Oof. Yeah, but um, definitely check that out. And yeah, so that's uh, that's all we have today. We're going to wrap it up after one hour. And, uh, Dirk, you have anything else you wanted to say? Or? No, I, you know, I was just trying to find a video that I had seen earlier today. Um, is it like good gaming or, uh, these guys do a really high quality YouTube kind of, uh, kind of cast. And, and the one I saw today was about, you know, Eve online and it, you know, it was about, uh, uh, you know, is CCP trying to kill its game or something like that it was like, the, it was like the clickbait headline of it. Right. And they mm -hmm. sort of went through kind of, you know, what's going on with drifters and Treglavian invasions and blackout and, and stuff like that. Right. And the comment I wanted to make about it was, man, 
they are really high quality in their editing and you know all that kind of stuff right like the the video itself is oh. basically just stock footage and 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 whatnot yeah, from yeah. Me. And, and these guys talk about like all of you know all other sorts of games and everything and if you're not an eve player watching this it's probably like pretty damn good and interesting and whatnot if you are an eve player it's like the amount of stuff that they just get so incredibly wrong <laughs> Like, you know, it is kind of like, you know, oh, man, I I wish these like, like, like they're taking stuff from like PC Gamer articles, like, you know, and, and, and quoting players of the games, the, the game. And at one point they're like, and this guy, the Matani, <laughs> which you definitely got a giggle out of me. But um, anyways, I was just trying to find it. So, yeah, so, right. so, no, I don't really have anything other to say, you know, other than there it is. You got it. There- there's a really funny uh, derivative of the Dunn Kruger effect, which basically says that like, if you if you listen to the news, uh, you'll you'll take it as authority, but then as soon as you hear something that's in your expertise or something, you'll hear all of the things that are wrong, and you'll be like, ah, oh, these people don't know anything. But then as soon as they move on past your topic, you will immediately fall back into thinking of them as an authority again. As long as they're not talking about your particular topic that you can actually correct them about. Yeah, as long as. But, but it is one of those examples of, of like, yeah, what, what seems to be a very high quality, yeah, 317,000 followers or whatever you know, their channel has and you know, things like that. And um, it, they, they do a very high quality you know, kind of broadcast. But, uh-oh. Uh oh. <laughs> the bombs are coming. Yeah, so anyways, I'm wrapping up my, my end up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so we'll put that. Let me grab that link for you guys here on Twitch. We'll also, you can find it in links on Talking In Stations Discord. All right. Well, that about wraps it up. There's a lot of stuff going on, but we haven't... Uh, we're going to save some stuff for later tonight for a Thursday show. You can hear about the Legacy versus Winter Coalition War. Check that out. And then uh, we will see you on Sunday for Talking In Stations Sunday. Uh, stay tuned for Torvald. We're going to go ahead and raid him. Blackout. <laughs> he is uh, Torvald's. Uh, Ash, what's Torvald's specialty? Torvald uh, does a lot of abyssal PvP, so he'll run mostly like level threes and stuff uh, in, va- or in the abyss in order to try to get proving conduits to fight other players. Yeah, so stay tuned for that if you want to see some good uh, PVE. Basically, somebody who's fighting the machinery behind Eve Online, and make no mistake, that's a big part of the future. Whether we all want to hear that or not. PvP will always be player versus player in a large landscape and ways to distinguish yourself and to to bring uh, reputation to yourself, but it's also becoming very, very challenging in a virtual world that fights back. It's going to be an interesting prospect. So check that out. Watch this uh, Torvald. He's an expert at fighting, uh, actually PvP, actually fighting other players inside of uh, a PV- PvE environment. It's very interesting. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out with us. Appreciate it. We'll see you tonight on Talking In Stations.